Hey, thanks very much. And Felicia, welcome back. Congratulations on the opportunity. I wanted to start off by asking about some of the great Canadian fighters over the years. I mean, there's been a bunch. Only a couple of Warren Gold in the UFC, though, Carlos Newton, GSP. Have you thought about what it would be like to be in that sort of company with a win here? Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy to be, like, I've been telling everyone, people keep putting me in the same sentence as GSP this week, and it's pretty awesome. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll kind of bathe in that glory after after I get the belt, so I don't have a job to do first. But it is, you know, the idea of being in, in that great company and uh, being able to hold, you know, hold the belt up and have a whole nation stand behind me is, is pretty awesome. The, uh, the poster for UFC 250 actually has you and Amanda sporting national colors, Brazil versus Canada kind of feel. Are you a fan of that? Is it extra motivation? Or do you try and take this as just any other fight? Uh, well, it's always any other fight. I always have, you know, some, someone standing in front of me I need to take out. Uh, but it is it is a really cool, I love the poster. I think it's, it's really cool, uh, you know, the look of it, is, it draws a lot of, like, national pride out of people, you know, especially from those nations. And um, even though we both live in Florida and I am a dual citizen, it's like the, the Canadian people have really gotten behind me, and I'm, and I'm so proud to, to be a part of, um, you know, part of their, you know, their sports athletes that they look up to and they want to support. So, uh, yeah, I love, I love the posters. The fight being pushed back, and you know, it's also no longer in Brazil, which it would have been originally. How does that work out for you? Does it work into your favor just a little because now you're not going into enemy ter- territory? Uh, that never phased me. You know, I always just kind of roll with the punches, and, and I've been in crowds that for me, and, and I know the Brazilian fans are very, you know, proud of their Brazilian champions, and it would probably felt a little different. But honestly, none of that really intimidated me or scared me. Like, I, I was excited to go to Brazil. My team was excited to go. Um, obviously, when things changed, when things got a little crazy with the world, we didn't really just, we didn't want to go on an airplane anymore. You know, <laughs> that was kind of the thing. And, um, you know, it, it ended up working out great that it, it was here in Vegas. And, um, yeah, now we're here. I mean, definitely got, um, we just had to live day by day, you know, so I didn't, didn't um, as, as time went on during the camp, you know, I didn't set expectations for it how things would go, where we would be, you know, we didn't know a few weeks ago where we would be. Um, so that way, you know, you don't ever have any letdowns or, or you know, expectations to try to live up to. So I'm really good at rolling with the punches here. <laughs> Speaking of the camp, I mean, through these last couple of events, we've been asking fighters what has camp looked like during a pandemic. So how have things been for you down in Florida preparing for this? Has there been much of a change from your usual routine? Definitely a big change. Uh, normally, I spend a lot of hours at the gym, but it's, it's you know a lot of it is teaching or um, you know we're doing group classes and, and you know doing the slow the slow drilling. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, for this camp, things switched right away. You know we, everything was closed, but we did I did have access to the gym privately. You know it was uh, behind closed doors. Uh, I had two training partners that um, you know my team we talked and, and kind of picked. You know the, the ideal people to work with to get ready for Amanda. Uh, even though having more bodies is always awesome, I, I think I picked the right um, the right training partners to get me get me ready for this moment. You know, so uh, so yeah, I had two people. We we all had a very serious you know agreement, you know, discussion about being responsible with ourselves outside of the the hour we spent together every day. Uh, you know, just following protocol and, and trusting each other to do that because we were. You know, at the time, kind of, it's kind of like almost like risky behavior to have contact with a human. You know, so, uh, but yeah, we we worked through it, and our team was was fully behind this this opportunity. Um, they bend over backwards to help me. Um, you know, and aside from that, a little bit of time in the gym, which was great. I you know had I had to do other creative things, you know, finding uh, my own workouts to do. You know, I was very motivated to work out, um, so I still did at least you know usually twice a day doing something and. It work in the park, you know, lots of parks were open for outdoor activities, so, so we had a, 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 a good tan working out outside more. Um, so yeah, it, everything I needed, uh, I found a way to make it happen, and, and I felt great about the camp. Everything we did was 100% intentional and focused on Amanda, which isn't, isn't normally how camp goes either, so I got, I got a good one in. Last one for me. Amanda's been on such a great run. So many fighters have tried and failed to get the better of her. What's the key that's going to separate you from those other challengers? 
I'm me, you know, I'm just, I'm just different. I feel, you know, every fighter feels different in the cage, of course, but I think I just have a different background, a different skill set, uh, a different pressure, a different grind, and I'm super motivated to take this belt home. You know, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm hard to take out. It's gonna be, I know she's hard to take out. Uh, I, I am confident in being able to finish, but if I need to just win every round, that's what I'm gonna need to do, and I'm, I'm ready to do that. All right, thanks very much. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. And we'll take our next question from Caroline Pierce with BT Sport. BT Sport, I got to ask you, when you drove into Las Vegas and saw your face on the billboard, what did that moment mean to you and feel like? <laughs> it was, uh, it's always just kind of crazy, you know, it, it really just makes the moment big. But I, at the same time, I'm so grounded with what's, what I have to do first, you know, like that billboard is like super cool and awesome to see, but I know, you know, it's, it's a representation of something big, a big opportunity for me. Uh, it was definitely reminiscent of seeing, you know, seeing a billboard um, for my first title fight for Invicta, way, you know, way back in the day. And it just kind of made me feel like oh, all these similarities of, you know, the experiences that I've, that I've been having leading up to this moment, uh, a lot of it feels kind of familiar and uh, it just makes me feel like, I have really good feelings about how the fight's going how it's going to work out for me. And you've also faced a legend before in Chrissy Cyborg, and, and despite the loss, your stock really rose in that fight. Fighting who is the greatest of all time, the GOAT, Amanda Nunes, does that bring any different feeling, whether it be pressure, extra motivation, or, or just a different sense as to what this is all about for you? It's, it's just as exciting. You know, the, the big opportunity that I had last summer, it, it kind of felt like a title fight. I think a lot of you media were kind of, Slipping up and, and calling it like a title or a five-round fight uh, because she had held the belt for so long. Um, there's definitely, like I said, all of these experiences that I've had before the UFC and in the UFC, including the, the cyborg fight, um, have just made this moment feel really familiar. You know, this week feels really familiar and feels so comfortable, like I always do. But you know, I'm definitely ready for this moment, and, and you don't always get such a big opportunity. And this is my second big opportunity <laughs> that I get, so this, this one's mine. To take. Although a lot must feel familiar, as you said, it's got to feel quite different being in Las Vegas when it's so quiet and you're not going to have a crowd and you're going to be in that smaller octagon. Have you prepared yourself for that in any way? Um, I think we've been preparing for this for, for months. You know, the whole world, is, we're all uh, adapting and, and you know, going through normal. And, you know, we, like I said, we roll with the punches so well. We're just, you know, we're looking at what we need to do and just doing it. And I'm sure things feel a little bit different, but... Um, the, I always say, like, we joke around in the gym, like, the weirder my camp gets, the, the more weird things that happen or just weird circumstances, the better I perform. So, like, if it's weird, I'm okay with it. And, and I'm going to embrace the, the no crowd. You know, I'm really going to – everything about this, this camp and this event and this fight week, um, I'm just embracing it and uh, I'm just go with it. And it's hard to say that there's any holes necessarily in Amanda's game. Obviously, she's at the top for a reason. But have you identified ways in which you feel is the best way for you to get the title, for you to raise your hand on Saturday night? I, you know, I, I think I just adapt. I can adapt to every moment, and I'm ready to, you know, my mental game. I think is, is what's going to win. You know, I, I don't get stuck. You know, if something doesn't go my way in one moment, I don't get down on myself. I, I don't feel like I'm losing. Uh, anything or any momentum. Um, I definitely just take every moment of the fight as a, as a fresh start if I need to. Um, so I, you know, I feel so confident that even if something doesn't go my way, I'm going to be really fine. I'm going to be able to switch things up. I'm going to adapt and, and use my pressure and my grind and, and uh, take it where I need to take it. Well, we certainly know what you can do on the ground. Do you feel you'll have a slight size advantage in there? Obviously, Amanda fights at 35 and 45, being a true 145-pounder yourself, having that home now in the UFC. Do you think that's something you can take advantage of? Um, I, I imagine that, that I will be a little bit bigger, but honestly, I'm, I'm not not counting on like size to win the fight. I, I, I don't imagine it will be too big of a difference. Or Everyone that's standing in front of me, you know, they're... It's not like it's not going to be a huge discrepancy, or even if it was, I don't think it plays that much into the into the game plan, you know. So you know, I've fought people that are bigger than me, you know, looking at them and and doesn't just phase me, so I don't anticipate it would phase her if I was a little bit bigger looking in the cage. So definitely not counting on size to win this. 
honey, are my skills to win this? And have you heard that she's no longer the lioness? She's now referring to herself as the cactus to, hear, to us at BT Sport. She said she's going to be very sharp if you come near her. What have you got to say to that? Uh, I love it. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Um, I believe her. You know, I know she's going to be the best version of Amanda, and at least I'm expecting that, and she's going to be the best version of me, and uh, lay it out. And last question from me. You'll be the first Canadian to challenge for a title since GSP did it against Michael Bisping um, in 2017. What does it mean to, to represent Canada and, and you know, the, being compared, as you said previously, to George St. Pierre? It's, it's an amazing feeling, uh, like I said, to have, just to have you know, a whole nation of people feel, feeling like they're all behind me, you know, messaging me and, and just uh, you know, throwing the flag up with me you know, to, uh, to represent. So I'm definitely honored to be in this position and, and lucky, to have, you know, lucky to have the support that I have. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's nothing I can really say that I'm just like humbled but also super you know, motivated to, to make everyone and myself, you know, just, just believe in me. Well, we're excited for this opportunity for you and can't wait to see you go to work. Best of luck. Thank you. And we will take our next question from Gabriel Pangalangan with Dojo Drifter. Felicia, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. So you've been pegged as a sizable underdog in this fight, but do you enjoy the underdog status, and do you think it relieves any pressure in any way going to the fight? I love underdog status. So definitely, uh, I hope I'm always the underdog in a way. You know, it's um, it's just nice to, to to know what you're capable of, and and hope that that night, you know, bring it out and, and execute what what you know you can do and. In this case, being such a big underdog, hopefully shock the world. Yeah, so you're looking to shock the world, and Amanda is a dominant two-division champion. If you were to beat her, of course, you're aiming to beat her. Where do you think this ranks in terms of upsets in MMA? Uh, it, would, it, would, it would have to be a big one. I, I feel like it would be on a lot of people's list, maybe like top five. You know, it, it's hard. I it haven't like given it much thought on the upsets in history. Um, but I know it would definitely be up there for, for a lot of people. I feel like for like the people around me and the people who support me, it might not be a surprise, but for, for a lot of people, it will be. Yes, yeah, so, and we've seen it before when dominant champions have their opponents mentally beat before the fight even begins. Where are you before this fight mentally? I'm great. I'm just, this is just like every fight. You know, I know the stakes are higher, but every fight is the biggest fight. I mean, you know, like even my last fight, that was the biggest fight of my life coming up because it's whatever, you know, whatever happens in that fight is going to determine the future. So for me, Amanda is another human being standing in front of me. And, um, you know, I, I always believed that I would not be faced by big names or anything like that. And I proved it to myself. I proved it to the world, I think, last summer. Um, you know, I, I truly, truly was not faced by a a legend standing in front of me, you know, so I'm, I'm honored to stand in front of a legend, um, grateful for the opportunity, but I'm not phased by it, you know, I know it's my skills and another person's skills, and we're going to fight and see who wins. All right, thank you, and best of luck. And we will take our last set of questions from Gustavo Falden with ESPN Brazil. Gustavo, please go ahead. Hi, Felicia. I wanted to know uh, which one and why do you think it's the most difficult? Solving an algebra equation or solving the problem of beating Amanda Nunes? Depends on the question, I guess. <laughs> um, it's, uh, I think, I think the, the skills, I think mean, people don't know, I, I was an algebra teacher up until last month. Um, the skills, the reason why I love to teach algebra is because it's, it's not about the algebra or the math. It's about the mental capacity to see a problem and solve it. And I think it really translates into fighting, too. And you know, I think I'm a very composed fighter. And when I'm composed, I can see a problem and find a solution. Uh, that's where I was talking about being adaptable. You know, I, I can see how we make a change and, and do it better, you know, in, in the moment. Uh, so I think it plays hand in hand <laughs> with what I'm, what I'm up against, um, just that that mental uh, problem solving training all uh, in real time. And how do you feel, uh, you know, with the, the pressure that Amanda has on her to being the favorite, being the champion, how do you feel about causing the upset? I'm excited about it. You know, I know she's confident. I, I also, 
here. You know, I, I believe that she does not underestimate me. Um, I, think, I think the world underestimates me more than she does. And I believe she expects a, a good fighter in front of her. Um, personally, she's going to be fighting me, so I'm going to be not allowing her to make history on Saturday night to, to you know, her, her goal to defend both belts simultaneously and be the first to do that. So, unfortunately, I, I won't be... Uh, if I have anything to do with it, I won't be letting that happen on Saturday. And the last one, uh, usually we say that race drivers, when they you know, uh, put their helmets on, they become like other person, ultra competitive, uh, and they become like wild. You seem like such a, such a nice person. You're, you're just so, so, so cute. And then when you go in the octagon, you transform yourself. Tell us a little bit about that transformation from, <laughs> from Felicia outside the octagon and inside the octagon. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that a, a great fighter has to be walking around in the street with a, you know, meat bug or anything like that. Like, I, could, I still smile all the time, you know, we goof off all the time, up, all the way up until the fight. But when we walk out, when I walk out to the fight, I, I understand that there's someone sitting in front of me that is going to try to hurt me. And then it's not just a sport anymore, it's also survival, you know, it's, it's the survival instinct that kicks in when that cage door closes and um, if I don't want to be hurt or, or lose, you know, that's the sport side of it, but if I don't want to be hurt physically, then I need to hurt her, you know, and, and you know, the next week I look back and maybe feel a little bad about how things, you know, how, you know, punching someone or, or ground and pound or choking, it's like, oh, you know, but none of that matters in the cage. I'm, I'm there to be violent. I'm there to, uh, to destroy in front of me. Uh, so that it's kind of like self-preservation, you know, I, I, it's not her, it's me, so I, I need to make sure it's her, that, that, you know, getting hit or, or choked or whatever the case, you know, whatever. Perfect. Thank you, Felicia. That's all the time we had for you. <laughs> cool. All right. Thank you, guys.